So if you've never solved the one by one variation of the Rubik's Cube before, then it may seem impossibly hard. But today I'll be teaching you a method that I used to teach many people who believe they would never be able to solve this. It's commonly believed that you can solve a cube one side at a time, but that's not actually what we're going to do. Instead, we'll move up one layer at a time. The first step is to make the bottom layer. Now, if you're color neutral, that means you can start on any color. So if green's already at the bottom, then that's great. And I'll just start with this. But if you're just starting out just to make it consistent, it's easier to learn on the same color. So we're going to go with white as the first layer color, and we want white to go onto the bottom. If white is on the top, what you can do is just turn the cube over and have it at the bottom, and that's actually okay. But if white is on the sides, then you actually can't just do that rotation because you'll run into parity, and the rest of the cube will be unsolvable. So instead, we'll be using a simple algorithm to help get white onto the bottom. The notation can look a little scary, but it's pretty simple. R means to turn the right side, and U means to turn the up or top side. So we start with R, which means turn this side clockwise as if you were facing it, like that. And then U means to turn the top clockwise. So if you faced it, it clockwise would be like this. And then the apostrophe or prime means counterclockwise. So R prime is to turn this side counterclockwise. And then U prime is like this. You just want to repeat that once or twice until white is on the bottom. However, if the white started at the back or on the left, then you just want to do a 180 degree turn to get it to either the front or the right. And then you can just repeat until it goes to the bottom. And that's actually the only algorithm we'll be using, so you probably want to use some good finger tricks for it as well. For turning the right side, you can use your wrist, but using your wrist for the top is not very fast. So it can be easier to do it like this. Right side with your wrist, and then turn the top with your index finger and then down and the top with your other index finger. So you can just practice this a bit until you're faster at it, and that'll make the rest of it a lot easier and you won't have to think as much. This method is actually really similar to the three x three beginner method. So once you get white onto the bottom, we've actually finished the white layer. What we normally do next is move on to the second layer, but since it's a one by one, obviously there is no second layer. So what we can do is then move straight to the last layer. In this case, the last layer color is yellow, and normally there are a lot of steps here, but since it's a one by one, it's actually a lot simpler. There are no edge pieces, and the corner piece is already in the correct spot, obviously because there's only one spot. So we can just skip straight to the last step, where we turn the cube upside down and try to get yellow onto the bottom. Now, very often yellow will already be at the bottom, but if it is not, then you can just repeat that algorithm from the start to try and get yellow onto the bottom. So here I'll do it once, and then here it is on the side, so I'll have to do it again. And there it is at the bottom, and you can see now the one by one is solved. Let's be honest, we all know the classic three x three Rubik's Cube is a lot more impressive. I also have a tutorial for that, but it takes a lot more practice and advanced techniques to become very good at it. However, the one by one can be a good entry point to speed cubing because it's much simpler to learn. So if you followed along and successfully made it to the end, then congrats on solving your first one by one cube. But if anything along the way was unclear and you couldn't make it to the end, then you're stupid.